I answered the door, and there stood the wildlife officials. They informed me of the new law. I could only keep five individual reptiles, and breeding wasn't allowed anymore anywhere in the state. They said I had 10 minutes to pick out five animals I would be allowed to keep, and the rest were going to be confiscated. You are watching Reptile Mountain TV. Evidence-based, captive-bred, and animal-focused. Hey, welcome. I'm TC Houston, a former professional AZA zookeeper and small batch reptile breeder. And this is a channel dedicated to evidence-based reptile care, where things such as opinion, they're just not considered fact. Now, if you're new, welcome. Please consider subscribing. And if you're returning, thanks for coming back. You are delicious. No, you know, no that doesn't make it sense. Uh, how about you are awesomeness? Yeah, that's a lot better. Now, y'all, I recommend staying through the entire video as I have a preview at the end of my new series called Reptile Mountain Down Under My Australian Reptile Adventures. You're not going to want to miss. Y'all real quick, check out my sponsor, Healthy Herp Instant Meals. Guys, this stuff is amazing. I use it as part of my Blue Tongue, my Gigi, my Berber Skink, and Tortoise Diets now. This company is an AZA commercial member and these products are 100% natural, nutrient-rich food for your reptiles. Check out the link in the description. My heart sank. I felt like crying and fighting and screaming. Wait, I could hear someone screaming. Who was that that was screaming? Oh wait, that sounds like me. It was me. <laughs> That's when I woke up. Yep, it was a nightmare. Something that obviously was causing me to literally scream in my sleep. <laughs> you guys might have seen a few months back or there was like a, a group of popular pet tubers, the YouTube type that were doing this like five favorite reptile species challenge? Well, I thought nothing of it, but apparently my subconscious decided to pervert it into a terrifying nightmare where I could only keep five individual animals in that nightmare. Oh, Anyway, it got me thinking. Not the YouTube challenge per se, but the nightmare. And I was thinking, what animals would I pick if that horrible law were actually somehow passed? It's not even a real law. Part of me believes that I would like treat my house like the Alamo and defend it like Davy Crockett making a last stand. <laughs> but in all serious, today I'm going to share with you my top five individual specimens who I would keep if I could only have five critters. Now before I start, I got to say that I love all my animals and I don't keep animals that I don't love. So therefore, everything I work with is something that I am totally head over heels passionate about. Anyway, here are my top five. Number five, this little beauty right here is Skid Boot, a pure US CBB captive born and bred 2019 Eastern Blue Tongue Lizard, aka Blue Tongue Skink. Now Skid Boot was produced by my friend Stacy Michaels over at Milky Way Reptiles from a female that was 100% pure New South Wales Eastern that I legally imported from New Zealand in 2018. Now besides this little animal's gorgeous inherent beauty, this animal represents something special, total success and mission accomplished. When my contact in New Zealand first reached out to me in 2017 about doing an import, I had been observing what appeared to be to me anyway, like an Eastern Blue, like the Eastern Blue Tongue population in the US was experiencing some slight inbreeding depression to an extent. There was like small litter sizes, weak babies, only a few were thriving, and so forth. And as I looked deeper into it, it turns out that most of the IBAN Eastern animals were somehow related, and many breeders, despite swearing up and down that their animals were not related were actually traceable back to a single litter that came from Europe. And not only that, but they were not actually pure New South Wales, as many had claimed, as I spoke directly to the breeder in Europe who stated that it was a New South Wales crossed with a Queensland. And they were open and honest about it, and there's no big deal, because honestly, uh, the locality thing is not a huge deal considering how in exceptionally rare these guys are in the first place. They are still 100% pure Easterns, and and calling them I-banded is totally legit because there's a real huge pronounced I-band. So that's totally legit. So anyway, I knew that adding some completely unrelated genetics from fully pure and legal Easterns from New Zealand could be a huge contribution to the hobby. Plus, I hoped that I could sell some and maybe be able to keep a few for myself. Win-win, right? Also, U.S. Fish and Wildlife 
Um, they had not yet restricted the importation of legal Australian wildlife from other non-Australian countries such as New Zealand and Europe. And little did I know that the import that brought this little guy's mama in would be possibly one of the last Eastern Blue Tongue imports legally to, into the United States for the foreseeable future. Had I known that, I would have you know, mortgaged my house or something and, and got a whole bunch more. But hindsight is twenty twenty, I guess. So anyway, this little one is the glorious result of that risk and work. Uh, the ones I kept back, you know, they didn't produce for me last season, and fingers crossed they will this season. But this one here is my number five because it represents a mission accomplished. Fresh, pure genetics. Way to go, Stacy. Hashtag winning. Number four. This little snake right here is Samson. Now, Samson is a locality-specific, anatheristic, rosy boa, a pioneer town annery, if you will. Now, Samson is a wonderful result of a five-year labor of love. In 2015, I bought Samson's mom, a female annery pine t anatheristic pioneer town, or annery pie town for short, in hopes of eventually breeding her. Now, it took me two more years to get a het annery pioneer town male, and a other, another year to get them to breed and Samson is a result of that breeding. He's my first Annery Pioneer Town born. Oh, and one more thing. Samson is also known as a paradox. Now, paradoxing in reptiles is referred to when an animal is supposed to have a double recessive expression of one trait, but parts or in whole, uh, the opposite occurs. For example, an albino that's supposed to have zero melanin or black pigment but has black freckles throughout it. That's a paradox albino. Well, he is anatheristic, so he's supposed to be missing the erythrin or red pigments, and yet he has freckles of orange throughout his body, making this little snake, as far as I know, the only paradox annery pioneer town rosy boa in the world. Number three, this bloke here. This guy is a US CBB, captive born and bred, 2017 Australian Northern Blue Tongue Lizard or Blue Tongue Skink. Now in the US hobby, Normandy here would be called a classic Northern, which basically means that he is a wild type with no line bred traits associated with him. And that in part is why I like him so much. Uh, don't get me wrong, I love those reds and oranges and yellows and so on from the line bred northerns. They're very pretty. But for me, a good old fashioned wild type animal is my favorite, a mother nature special. Now, Normandy was the first skink born after I officially formed Reptile Mountain as a business rather than just me. So he is, in a way, a representation of Reptile Mountain's success. He's also a pristine specimen and an excellent breeder. I just love Mr. Normandy here. Time out, time out, time out. For those of you who might be in the bathroom watching on your phones, this is your opportunity to you know, adjust so your legs don't fall asleep, wipe, wash your hands, do whatever you need to do. This is your poop break shout out. My shout out today is to Scott Sherman. And here is a fun sound effect since you like sound effects just for you. Now back to the show. Number two, this spectacular animal is Alphaba. Now if you've watched my channel before, then you might have seen this guy already who's in shed at the moment. Now, Alphaba is a CBB, captive born and bred, 2014, male Utah banded Gila monster. He is a true locality animal with lineage traceable back to a re to research animals from an er a from a university in California. Now, Gila monsters are probably one of my favorite species of lizard on the planet, and I believe they're one of the best pet lizards as well. The only hiccup is that they are venomous, which for me makes them cooler in my mind, but as for a pet, uh, for a beginner, it's kind of a downside for sure. Plus, uh, because of their protected status, they're not legal in some of the states where they actually reside in the wild, and the venomous part also makes them not legal in certain states and counties and so on. Anyway, Alphaba, Alphaba has been with us for almost six years and has truly become a true genuine part of our family. And I can't say that for all my animals. Sure, I love all my animals, um, but some of them are truly livestock for breeding, whereas this wonderful Bubba is a family member. I mean, who wouldn't love that face? Before I reveal my number one animal, 
Let's do a couple honorable mentions. First, we have my Gigi Skinks, Waylon, and this one here, Emmy Lou. These two have so much personality, and I just love watching them go about their daily lives in their vivarium. Second honorable mention that we have is Billabong and this little girl here, Waltzing Matilda, a U.S. captive born and bred 2015 and 2016 Ant Hill or Pygmy Pythons. Now this little one is the 2015 one. Now these little gems, these little dirt red gems, are some of the best pet snakes ever. They eat like champs, they breed like champs, and they are sweet as pie. I just love the ease of care of these amazing snakes and the beauty and simplicity of a pure python in an itty bitty package. Okay, now for my number one top pick individual animal in my collection. Drum roll please. Here she is. This big girl here is Sam. Now Sam is a plain, a boring, a normal, a wild type, and wild caught ball python. To every morph breeder, she is blah. But guess what? I don't love the ball python morph world. I didn't say I hate it, I just don't love it. And it's okay if others do. And it's okay for both of us, yes. But anyway, I got Sammy here when I was a little boy, long before Bob Clark ever produced a single albino ball python, which by the way was the first morph and it was produced and hatched in 1992. I love Sammy here for her intrinsic beauty. I love her for her personality and for all the memories I've formed with her over 30 plus years that she's lived with me in three different states and in five different houses. She's been with me through my formative years. She's been through everything in my adult life. She lived with my dad when I lived in Africa for a while and then a stint when I was deployed in Afghanistan with the military. Sam is my number one. <laughs> because even though I have tons of other specimens worth thousands of dollars and some are super rare and many more unique than a plain ball python, Sam is my girl for sentimental reasons. Hashtag friends for life. Y'all, I hope you enjoyed seeing my five top picks from my collection. Let's hope and pray that my nightmare stays in the imaginary world and such a horrible day would never come. Now, as I promised, I am excited to present a brief preview of my upcoming series, Reptile Mountain Down Under. Enjoy. A young Australian pink tongue scene. Ah! Oh, baby! I'm standing outside the Australia Zoo home of the crocodile hunter, Steve Irwin. This is Peter Birch. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Go check out Jake's channel. His channel is Aussie Reptiles. The link will be in the description. This is Daisy. She's a rescued koala. She's a northern koala, about five years old. I'm TC Houston. I'm Joe Paul. This is Reptile Mountain TV. Versus blue tongue. Isn't this a gorgeous little snake? This is a young one, about two meters long. Or... Make sure to stay tuned. Well, folks. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. Please subscribe and stay tuned for my new series coming in 2020. Thank you, patrons. You are the bestest ever. I'm TC, and as always, opinion is not fact.